business out in nobody's street. So we just started the recording. Mr. Carlos, could you please tell me the things that you would like to discuss and the things you are feeling you need aid in figuring out how to handle? Yes. I have a property. The property that I have is just was settled on forbearance. Once it was settled on forbearance, my mortgage was increased by $200. Um, the purpose of me filing the suit against them, I filed a police report against the credit bureaus. I, I have uh, a, a, I have uh, other credit cards that are being reported on my credit that are fraudulent. But I am using the credit cards only to sue the bureau but I was gonna entwine the 605 Fair Credit Reporting Act, and I was gonna include the 605 in a letter that I sent to the mortgage company telling them to block. Now, I'm gonna have to stop you for just a second. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to stop you for just a second are these the credit cards that you say are fraudulent yes okay then you can't use them if you use them they're not fraudulent because you're using them they're not fraudulent now you can say the charges on the card are fraudulent but once you use the card you're entering into a contract with the credit card company which makes the card legitimate because oh, no. it makes it your card can I explain before, before we go deeper into this? Yeah, yeah, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead, because I have to I, I have to say that because it would be fraud if you say that they're fraudulent and you're using them. So that's why I had to say that, okay, okay. to protect you. Okay, oh, go ahead. What I'm referring to is it is a QCIF number that was created for the credit card as well as it is a inquire, inquire what is this correct? Word inquiry. Inquiry. Yes, it is. Yeah, a inquiry. It's a, it's a credit issue. Yes, it's a 604. It's a violation of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and it's included in why the that bank they bank. created a that they created a QCIT number for it. What's wrong with creating a QCIT number? I was gonna. I was gonna say. Hold up, that's throwing me off. Hold up, sir. Okay, you get thrown. I know, I know. That is not. I knew issue. that threw you off. This is okay. what I want you exactly. <laughs> so what I want you to Hold understand, on, if up. they created, I'm if they created a QCIT number, there is no law against them creating a QCIT number. Now, if you can prove that they are profiting off of that QCIT number, that that QCIT number is associated with a stock that's associated with your interest, that's a whole new different ball game. That's why I said what I said. Go okay, ahead. but the 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 credit bureaus. I done did this before. I even have. I know you told me. Yeah, I, I had a conversation this about you going in on the six hundred four and the six hundred six, and I think you did six hundred nine as well. But I remember and the six hundred five because the six hundred five tell them that they have five days four to five days to block the information. So that was the 605. Well, let me do you a big favor. Uh -huh. I'm going to do you the largest favor in the world. Now, we're, we haven't started yet, so don't worry, okay? This is not buying into your time. I'm actually stopping you because there are certain key things that I need to clarify, but I also need to let you know that if you want to start a business, you can start a business actually helping people with these 605, 604 letters against the credit bureaus, explaining to the person what they need to do and you process the letters for them. You don't have to show it to the client. You just get a limited power of attorney from them so that you can communicate with the credit bureaus on their behalf and send the letters to them and then tell them what to do when they go to court. You could actually start your own business doing this for people. You could actually bring in some extra revenue because a lot of people are having this type of stuff done to them. 
trust me because everybody was coming to me to help them fix their credit when I first started. Mm -hmm. That's how everybody, that's how I got everybody's attention, how I cleared up 17 people's credit in less than six months by just sending an hour style money order in a letter. Okay, so that's how I got started. I promise you, hour style money order. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you never heard of the hour style money orders? I heard it, but it, it like I say, that, you that must goes. be new to all of this. Yeah, it, it's kind of. Well, I'm it, the inventor of the hour style money orders. I am the guy who put that junk out there. That's why it's called hour style. That was my style of a money order. Uh -huh. So, uh, because I started out that way, that's what everybody knows me for. But mm -hmm. again, what you're doing, I'm letting you know. Just okay from the beginning of last year until now. Three different segments of our organization, the consults, the donations, and the and the donations stopped after April. There are no more donations after April, but the donations, the consult, and SATCOM SAT packs, our organization has made eighty-five thousand dollars. Mm. Now again, the consults go directly to the organization, doesn't come to me. Now the organization mm. does take care of the necessities because they own the property. Mm -hmm. But my necessities. I'm off grid. I don't have any necessities. I'm not driving a fancy car. My two cars are 98s and they're both donated. Mm -hmm. So I'm not spending any money because that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell you is you can do the same thing. You can earn extra monies on a side by processing this for people. The exact same thing you're doing. Now I'm going to shut up again and let you finish telling me, but I just wanted to give you that. <laughs> as an idea for what you can do mm. in the future okay. to bring in some extra revenue because there are thousands of people out there who need this help. And mm. all you got to do is help a few and give them a discount and tell them to tell a friend. And I promise you, you'll be bringing in more revenue than you know what to handle. You'll be opening up offices and so on and so forth. You'll yeah. be having attorneys being upset with you because you're cutting into their business. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just just telling hey, you the truth. I just want to throw this in there. The police okay. got so upset with me to where now when I go in to file the police report, they tell me they can't even take a statement from me. What did she tell me? She said, "See, you know, I'm sure all crimes there are a statement that is given where the officer write the statement down." I'm in the yes. police precinct trying to make a statement. <laughs> and the lady and the lady just telling me, oh, well, you can't make no statement. It ain't no statement needed for this. We going to write the police report. Let me ask you. And then she says. And they have been following your police reports for uh, theft and credit fraud and all that stuff. They have been doing the reports, right? Yeah, they did. It. They did. It. They gave me the. Uh, do, you know how to, do you know how to get your statement did on the record? Huh? Do you know how to get your statement on the record with that police report? Oh, that's what I was. That bring was in, this call was for. Bring in a notar. Okay, bring in a notarized affidavit. They can't refuse that. What? Notarized. You bring in a notarized affidavit. Call it information. Just call it information sheet. <laughs> Remember, the Constitution says that no one shall be held to answer for a crime. Unless upon indictment or information, so do an affidavit. The same as a police officer does an affidavit to have somebody arrested or put in jail. Put Hold an up, affidavit on the record. You talking get over my head? You talking over my head? I gotta simple it down, son. What? What you mean talking over your head? <laughs> you ain't that tall. Listen, hold on, hold on, listen to me. Listen, listen. I done been through jury trials and everything, but certain words, like I say, I pay my lawyer. Okay. My, look. My okay, lawyer, well, stop paying, paying a lawyer. Let huh? me tell you what your job is to do. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So your right under the Fifth Amendment mm -hmm. is to understand that the Fifth Amendment says no person shall be held to answer for any crime unless upon indictment or information, i.e. affidavit. So you have to do the same. That's what the police officers, the police officers don't arrest anybody as a police officer. They do it as a private citizen. And they put an affidavit on the record. Their police report is an affidavit. When the police put their police report on the record, that's an affidavit. When you sign that report, it becomes an affidavit. What I'm telling you is to give them an affidavit explaining 
everything that needs to go with that. All the things that you claim has been done. You can't make any conclusional statements. You can only say it appears they're trying to do this. It appears they're attempting to do this. It appears they're trying to commit fraud. Now it appears they're trying right to unjustly up. enrich themselves. Let yes, me go stop, ahead. please. Okay, look. Yes. My purpose of leaving the fraudulent credit cards on my credit report was to file the the lawsuit against the credit bureaus for all of them, including you know, the more. You need to get this understanding. You can leave the credit cards on there, but you can't use them unless you can prove that they are getting the QCIT numbers oh, and I using got, those cards for their own. I, 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 I didn't say you didn't have it. I'm trying to tell you why I mentioned what I mentioned. I'm oh. not trying to tell you you can't do what you're doing. I'm saying you can't do it unless these things are taken care of. So unless you can prove that they're doing it for unjust enrichment, i.e. your affidavit saying it appears they're doing it for unjust enrichment. It okay. appears that they're involved in a conspiracy to deprive me of my property and to defraud me. He said they appear they to. No, it appears they're doing this. Okay, it appears. It appears they are attempting to do this. It appears they're attempting to do that. It looks like this. It appears that this is what's going on. You can't make any definite statements, but you have to make it sound like there's a possibility. Get the get the, Follow get me? the letter that I got that I'm going to sue them with. Get the letter. Let me read this to him. Read this letter to him. Okay. So he, he you got to you The gotta only reason I'm hesitating that, going to the federal court yet because they told me to I have to notify them. Get the letter to the police report right quick. That not to the police report that I'm waiting to sit in right now. Wait, 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 wait. You have to notify who? Okay. I have to notify in the 605 block, you have to notify the creditors, and they have five days to block it from your credit, from your report. Okay. If they, and, and in order okay. for in, in order for them to put it back on your credit, you have to have a list of things that you is requesting from them. Now, in the security- okay, Mr. Hispanic like, Carlos. Huh? Mr. Hispanic Carlos. Thank you, I'm in the I room, Nana. Because I need- Shame you. on you. Why are you yelling? Cause I, I'm sorry, you saying- You, you yelling, that ain't the way you <laughs> communicate. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Carlos, that ain't the way to communicate. You got to talk to people. No, I'm trying to get the business and handle it. I know time is of the essence, so I'm trying no, to... No, Carlos, huh? Carlos, if I was in a rush, I would have told you. I ain't got time for this. Uh -uh, hurry up. What y'all doing? I, well, you would have heard me say that. I promise you. You know me. You would have heard me say that. I'm yeah. giving you my time. You paid for my time, so calm down. Okay. That's why I'm taking my time. We haven't even started yet. Yes. So calm okay. down and stop yelling at people. God. No, I didn't know the baby one. I'm only saying that. that I, I don't want to hear it because that's your that's your habit. That's what you do all the time. Ain't nobody going to sit up here and tell me different because if you do it at school, you're going to do it at home. That's my mama used to say that all the time. So if you practice it, you just did it without hesitation. <laughs> Which means hey, listen, you do don't be it saying all that in front of my wife. My wife told me so she see through your bullshit. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm wife. just <laughs> telling you the way things are. I'm not, I can't spell it any other way. You see, hey, she said, she but said, what I'm trying bullshit. to tell you, <laughs> why would you have a house that's so disruptive? Everything should be peaceful when you walk into your home. Yeah. You should be peaceful. Yeah. On the outside, let all the violence and the ignorance be outside, but don't have it in your house. Talk to people. Don't raise your voice. There's no reason to raise your voice. There's no reason to yell or scream at your family members. Why would you yell at someone that you love? Save the yelling for people you hate. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And even then, you don't have to yell at them because you got to put forth effort to yell so you don't even give people who you hate that type of attention. They don't deserve it. Okay. Yes. Just a suggestion, not telling you how to run your life. How old are you, Mr. Carlos? Uh, 39. 
Okay, Mr. 39, if I talk to you like you are 39 and I'm 54, do not okay. take any offense to it because my son is 32 this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do not take offense to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you said you had a letter that you wanted to be read. Go yeah. for it. Read your letter. Read the letter. You got my phone. Wait, you got my phone. Oh, 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 one sec. Oh, well, I'm on her phone here. She is in her phone. I don't know why you sitting up there on her phone when you know she got to read the letter. But see, I tried to connect. Making things so confusing. No, listen. She tried to connect things through my phone, but my phone was having difficulties connecting. So that's why you seen us trying to connect multiple times. So once my phone didn't work, she had to do it through her phone because her phone is a 11 and mine is an 8. So, so her move a little bit. You ain't supposed to be having no touchscreen phone in the first place. You're supposed to be having one of those flip phones. You know better than that. <laughs> no, nah, I can't. By use the way, <laughs> AT&T makes a flip phone that the touchpad and all of that stuff, especially for individuals who are impaired. And it's not expensive. But that's just something you can have on the side. By the way, have you gotten all the benefits of being impaired? With the phone company, the electric company, and all these other companies? No. Because no, no. there are a lot of discounts that you get for being impaired. Oh, my goodness. I need and there are a lot of services that come to you. So what I can do is I can put you in touch with the visually impaired person with our organization. And she can walk you through the, everything. Because she's visually impaired because somebody literally broke into her house, tried to home jack her, mm -hmm. and shot her in the head in front of her children for dead, leaving her for dead. And she survived. And, and uh, so this happened in the '90s, and she's been dealing with this since the '90s. Go ahead. And like I was telling you about them public officials, the guy that that shot me was a public official, and he beat the case because because he, you couldn't identify him. Official. That's what I think. Because it was no. 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 Because you could not identify him. You're visually impaired. The same thing with her. She couldn't no, identify he, her assailant. To be visually impaired. He caused it. Yes, I know. But during a jury trial, how will you identify the person who did this to you? Oh, You're visually yeah. impaired. You can't identify him. You make sense. Man, you be, need to start with that, man. You, no, no, I have to tell her the same thing because that's what's required when a person's on trial. You have to identify your uh, victim. I'm not victim, but the person who assaulted you. You have to be able to identify them. A person who is visually impaired cannot identify the person who assaulted them. Okay. And they can't go off of sound. I remembered their voice. That doesn't work. That only works on, and, on television. And yeah. no DA will take the case because they will tell you we can't win. Unless there was another person who saw the incident. And in her case, when she got shot, her children were there, but they were too young to identify anybody. She knows exactly who the people were. These are people she knew. Yeah. But there's nothing she could do about it. So yeah. that's the reason. It's not because he was a public official. Okay, not because he's a public official. But I'll tell you something before we go on. Let me tell you how to handle that public official. How long ago did this happen? Uh, in 2000 and what? What, what, what date I got you? 2010. Okay, so send that public official a bill. Say, hey, you know what? Since 2010, I suffered an injury from you. And remember, he was a public official, so you need to file a claim with risk management with the county and the state. Shh, we'll get to it. We'll come back to this at the end. But you file a claim with them, let them know, hey, guys, hey, I was caused injury by one of your public officials. It's already documented on record. You don't need to prove anything. You're just bringing forth a claim. You're going to do everything administratively. You're going to file your complaint with them. You're going to send him notification. Hey, you caused me injury. And since 2010, this is what it has cost me. So I'm charging you a penalty for what you've done, charging you for the causing me of injury. And for each day that I've had to suffer, and I'm 39 years old, life expectancy for a black male is 74. So from 39 to 74, I'm going to have you paying me for the injury and having to tap into my trust fund. And you give him a bill. And then once you give him that bill, three, 30 days later, give him 30 days to pay. 
You send him another letter. Hey, I'm going to forgive you of this debt. I'm not going to forgive you of the injury you caused me, but I'm going to forgive you of the debt. Here's your 1099-C. You need to talk to your tax agent because you might have some tax liabilities. But peace out, G. And that's all you got to do. Yeah. It really is that simple. We'll get, we'll get to this at the end of the consult. We'll be starting in about five minutes. So okay. go ahead and tell me the letter. Okay, so I have become aware of potentially fraudulent transactions during a recent review of my credit report. This account is involved in a criminal investigation. They said I am, this said I am requesting the proof of the obligation should be complete and include copies of the following documents. The CUSIF number, the date the loan inquiry was placed, the date the loan was issued, a 1099A internal revenue service filing that is required to be filed for the personal loan, um, the date the mortgage was securitized, who securitized this mortgage and what taxable event took place in the securitization of this trust was open that last question is a very important question but go ahead okay. well, hold on, which one it, it elaborate real quick <laughs> the last question no no we'll, we'll get to it but the last question about the <laughs> taxation the, and the taxation <laughs> associated with the securitization of the account that's a very important question extremely important but go ahead the date trust was open, the date trustee was assigned, any separate bonds and or securities that were created from the QCIF number uh, slash account, any and all internal revenue service filings that are associated with the QCIF number on and off ledger, any and all internal revenue service filings that the trustee filed on behalf of the beneficiary. And then said, Do me a favor. Yes. Send me a copy of that and I will polish it up for you. I will add <laughs> in the 1098 and I will add in some other information that you're going to need with that letter. I will create a template for you and okay. I would suggest you use this template. I'm going to suggest you use this template once I add in the other information that you're going to need because there's a securitization trustee. You didn't add the pooling and servicing agreement, nor did you add the uh, mortgage-backed security okay. that it was associated with. So there's there's the remic and so forth. There, there's some other language that needs to be added that you can okay. do. Now, what I'm going to suggest, you don't have to read the other rest of it because I understand the, the gist of the communication. And I also understand why you're following a police report. So I will tell you that the following of a police report regarding your mortgage is ingenious. Okay. Man, Everybody else in that grandmama should be doing it. Don't be doing it because you'll get me too out. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> that's your fault. <laughs> that's your fault because I'm gonna tell you, you the say, reason. You're trying to have a calm conversation. Don't do that though, bro. Because if you do that, you're gonna make I'm me gonna feel like I'm really you. on the right track. And, and guess what? I I'm, hate that. I'm gonna try to people. tell you why why it was ingenious. Uh -huh. Because you're claiming that the bank is defrauding you. The bank is gonna try to foreclose on your property. Well, they can't do that because there is a counterclaim to the administrative process that they're doing. They're doing an MRIM process. Now, in order to get past the, now, with your permission, I like to tell this to other people because I hadn't thought about filing a police report as a result of the fraud. I won't tell them about the things you are bringing up because that's all you. You can tell them about like tell everything about. about me. Go to public records. Go to public records okay. about publicize. Well, let me go ahead and explain. <laughs> oh no, you don't. If my you wife would like, don't do it. No, my no, don't do it. No, my wife say don't do it. Your your views are too thick. Don't do it. <laughs> she, you know, she said your views is go very. I told you I can't see, so I thought it was just you and I. <laughs> but you know how to edit what you need to edit out, but. No, 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 no. I won't, no, I won't, I won't play. No, no, no. See, because they can't see anything on the screen. They can't see you on the screen or anything. They just know your name is Carlos. They can't see you, but they will be able to see her because her name showed up when I went through the list. So I won't show the video. Do you want the cell phone or do you want the letter to your email? That, that, that's not my name. So you, you send it to the, okay. Send it to the email, but see what I'd like to do is I'd like to continue this conversation so that we can talk about everything 
And I'd like to publish this video online with your permission so people can hear what we're talking about and they can hear me tell you about the angle you were going at so that they can see. Because see, when I do videos, they don't get to hear both sides of the conversation unless I bring in the young. No, get back in that room and shut up. No, uh, I did. Hey, no, well, don't do that. Take that boy. <laughs> I didn't say that. Okay, no. take that boy back in that room. And I didn't say that, though. No. That's what it's like. Why are you always yelling at us? We ain't doing nothing to you. Uh, no, he quiet. He ain't said nothing. He was just looking at me. I don't want him looking at me. You see, we don't want that right now because that's the only other side of the conversation they can get. So here they get to get the other side of the conversation. Okay. okay, okay. And by doing that, they get to see how we came to certain conclusions, how we got there. Okay. Without this, they don't get to see how we got there. They only get to hear my response to it. And so that's why I put up certain consults online so people can see the gradualization of the conversation. So let me tell you why it was ingenious. The bank is doing an in-rim, and we can start the consult now, right. but the, the bank is doing an in-rim proceeding. In-rim. The said. word in-rim, well, you have three jurisdictions, in-rim, persona, and um subject matter jurisdiction mm -hmm. so the bank is saying hey we have jurisdiction because it involves your property and we're only here to talk about the property we ain't here to talk about you or your interests and that's why they only deal with the property and they only deal with the deed of trust but that's a lie they're not supposed to be dealing with the deed of trust they're supposed to be dealing with the note the promise to pay and the fact that the trustee is saying that they have not received payment, but they're not showing proof that they haven't received payment. All they're doing is putting a stupid statement on the record. And that statement doesn't even have a signature, doesn't even have any validation from any official saying, we've received this payment, we're the custodian of records, and we're verifying that we have not received a payment from them, and they need to prove that they sent us a payment. No, the court's only making the person prove that they sent the payment. So what you need to do, like you're saying, I believe that there's been fraud here. I believe that this loan has been paid off. I believe that this loan has been paid off. And not only do I believe this, but they created a QCIT number and they're trading my property on the market as part of mortgage-backed securities and they're making a profit off of this. And I am not receiving any credits from the profit that they're making. And there is nothing on record to show that they've ever paid me a dime for the use of my property and my interest and in trading it on the market. I have the right to property and no one can deprive me of my property without due process of law. The law makes it quite clear that a warrant shall not issue unless upon probable cause. So I have the right to be secure in my possessions, my properties, my things and my effects. And they are depriving me of that right, which means they're committing a crime against my due process right and the law prohibits that. I believe they're attempting to defraud me in order to make unrich gains, and I believe that they are in conspiracy with the securitization trustee, the trustee for the bank, and the trustee for the servicing company. We have so many different trustees because there appears to be more than one trust. Pay attention, securitization trustee, you were right when you put that in your letter that there is another trust created. Like I said, you don't realize what you're saying, but I'm trying to get you to understand. You have your deed of trust and you have the securitization trustee. That's a different trust. That has nothing to do with your deed of trust. So where the, is this deed of trust securitization trustee coming from? Because they created a trust agreement, which you gave them permission to create. Go ahead, talk to me. Out the, the purpose of me trying to get that, I did not. I did not want to put just 1099A in there because... Oh, no, you're going to add 1099, 1098, uh, 1099Cs? You're going to add all of that. But I thought they filed the 1099C after something was canceled. Oh, no, they don't file it after... they. If you don't make a payment for six months, 1099C doesn't need to be filed. The law says they don't even have to wait six months. All they have to do is deem the debt as uncollectible and they don't have to wait. They, the banks are not required to file a 1099C anymore. There's a moratorium. Matter of fact, 
I'm going to start sharing my screen so I can take you to that so you can see that there is a moratorium on the banks filing a 1099C. Oh. Yeah, the IRS said we ain't going to penalize you mother for doing a 1099C. That's what the IRS is saying. No. Okay. I got to unshare my screen for a second because the screen I got to go to. No, let me let me do it this way. No, I don't want to do it that way. Minimize, minimize, minimize. Sorry, the, the window that would have been open is a company email. Even though everybody knows the company email address, I don't want them seeing what everybody else has been requesting or asking because it's none of their business. So we're going to open up Opera and we're going to open up a new window. So I'll show you where the banks don't have to do any 1099 C's, but why you are going to be asking for a 1099 C. The... I just didn't know how to ask for it. That's all. And they kept throwing me off with the abandonment of property. But go ahead. You say I heard your last video. You say don't keep him. Don't keep him. Oh, no, no, no. We're okay. I'm typing right now. Okay. Okay. No, I don't want to put do not, but are not required. One zero nine nine C. Question mark. And we're in opera, so there's a whole different. Don't know how I messed up. Okay. Meet the January 31st deadline. Well, look at that. Nobody is talking about no 1099 uh, NEC. Um, but we're instructions for 1099A and 1099C. Financial yeah. institutions yeah. described in this. Uh, I'm not looking for that. I'm liking uh, looking for where the IRS has put a moratorium. Credit unions, while required to report discharge of indebtedness, applies only to. We're going to go here and we're going to copy that so that I can get right to that. Be one second while I click on this link. If it will let me click on it, it hasn't attempted to even go to this. OK, it's finally going. Which doesn't make any sense. And control F. And control V and enter. Well, the requirements to report discharge of indebtedness applies only to entities described above. There is no specific prohibition in the Internal Revenue Code or income tax regulation that forbids the reporting of discharge of indebtedness by entities not required to report, such as reporting mail. Oh, God, I'm just looking for the parts where the banks are not re required. And I know it's in the instructions for the IRS, but I thought I would find it here. Now, what I'm going to going to do is I'm going to tell you I'm going to put this in the chat because I hadn't gone over this before. Mm -hmm. This is the mm -hmm. this is another lawyer sitting up here. She's this uh, individual. Michael is a CPA and so forth. And he's talking about who's required to file and who can file a 1099 C. So when I tell you guys that I missing no beat when I tell you that I know for a fact you get to file a 1099 C. I know this for a fact, can't nobody come to me and tell me, no, they can't, because I've been hearing CPAs and everybody and their grandmama saying that y'all can't do this. So in the chat is the link for, for this particular document that I've looked up. That's the other thing, that's how this works. As we're talking, like I said, if I wasn't having this conversation, a lot of things would not be taking place. We would never be having a conversation about who's required to follow 1099C. Okay. 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 When should your bank send a 1099A or C? Nobody cares about that. Cancellation of debt, the lender must file and send a 1099C report. I think this might do it, but if it doesn't, I'll go to the IRS site. But I do know that financial institutions that do mortgage-backed securities are not required to file a 1099C. <laughs> Yes, see, this is just when a lender uh, does this. Uh, that I'm going to have to go to the certain situations. You may exclude cancellation of debt income. Nobody cares about that. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to the IRS. What I will do, 
the IRS provides a list of lenders that must report using a Form 1099-C. Generally speaking, covered lenders are those who are regularly engaged in the business of lending money, blah, 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 blah. But what they won't talk about is anybody engaged in mortgage-backed security. There is a moratorium on that. What is that? What is so that? as long as they're engaged in mortgage-backed security, there's what a is that? moratorium. What is that? What Wait, is say it again? That I pulled what is up. That I pulled that I was going that long. But I was going that long. Oh, yeah, because you were breaking up. This, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're breaking up. Sorry. Hold on. What is that mortgage oh, act? What is that, that mortgage I, act that I, oh, the mortgage, I have no idea what mortgage act you pulled up. It's called mortgage, it's called mortgage debt, forgiveness. Debt forgiveness. Act. Oh, the debt forgiveness. The, yes. The mortgage debt, 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 the mortgage debt, debt forgiveness. I will go there in just a second. Let me pull up this IRS publication and I will put in Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act now. But the phone is not at him. But the phone is not at him. Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act extended. I believe this deals with the moratorium. What does moratorium mean? What does moratorium mean? The moratorium where they made it to where you didn't have to pay certain mortgages that nobody had to pay their mortgage during a particular time so uh but what is the mortgage debt forgiveness debt relief act still in effect or it says is it still in effect so let me go ahead luckily debt relief options for mortgages remain available including tax breaks through the mortgage forgiveness debt relief act which forgave taxes on discharged mortgages debt up to $2 million through 2020. So basically, if they discharged your mortgage through a 1099-C, you didn't know the taxes is all that says. Oh, okay. That's that's only oh, okay. part of it. I don't know the gist of it because I've never gone over to the Mortgage Debt Forgiveness Act. Never cared about it. Okay. I See, did that how to okay. avoid I taxes on canceled okay. mortgage debt. So okay. because when they cancel okay. your mortgage debt, that's a 1099-C. Because you're the debtor on a 1099-C, mm -hmm. then you're responsible for the taxes. Mm -hmm. So they did the debt forgiveness so that the person wouldn't be responsible for the taxes. And now they have the homeowner relief program. Mortgage relief program gives a $3,780 back to homeowner. Owners. The new GSE mortgage relief program could put thousands of dollars in your pocket. Oh, I am so much needing thousands of dollars in my pocket. So that's what that is. Oh, okay. So you have the homeowners relief oh, okay. program and the mortgage debt relief program or the mortgage debt forgiveness program. Now, what I want to do before we go on, like I said, it, it is my job to prove everything. So now that I'm in here in this uh, document, let's control F. And we're going to put in B-A-C-K-E-D-S-E-C-U-R-I-T-I-E-S. -E -E uh oh, it didn't like security. So let's put, because I do know, oh, it didn't like backed either. Okay. M-O-R-T-G-A-G-E. Okay, let's see. No test year, not worried about that. In this instance, the transferee entity, including a real estate mortgage investment conduit, that's Remix, not looking for that. I need to find the other one that talks about lender who is barred by local, don't care about that. Mortgage D exercise, don't care about that. Uh, uh, enter description. No, this is for a 1099C, so this is not helping me. Um, give me a second. Oh, God, no penalty. P E N A L T Y. And let's see if I can find it this way. I've done the video. Okay. Until further guidance is issued, pass through and remix. Until further guidance is issued, no penalty will apply for failure to file form 1099C or provide statements to debtors for a canceled debt 
held in a pass-through securitized debt arrangement or held in a remit. Okay, so please understand, you're going to include this information. Has there been a cancellation of debt and or forgiveness of debt associated with the pass-through securitized debt arrangement and or the remit associated with this mortgage and or the securitization of this mortgage? That's the question you're going to be adding. You follow me? You're going to get to go back over the video. You ain't got to write nothing down. We're recording this. Okay, because that was trying to make sure that we're recording it so you don't have to take notes. I don't know what you're trying to do to me. I told you about how time is. You're just trying to take up my time now. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Lord have mercy. All right. The only reason why I took this time to find this for you, first to let you know that I don't just talk out the side of my neck. And that's the other thing, me showing you where to find things. That's mm -hmm. why I said when you go through, mm -hmm. this is the instructions for Form 1099A and 1099C. I'm going to put the link in our chat, and all you have to do is go to page, give me a second page, it says page four, mm -hmm. and they're passed through mm -hmm. and remix. And it says it right there in the very first paragraph, who is not required to do a 1099C. And it, not only are they not, according to the IRS, it just says there's no penalty. They are required to notify you, but it says that they don't have to give you notice that they've canceled your debt. But yes, they do, because they have to report it to the credit bureaus. They have to report it to the credit mm -hmm. bureaus. That is a mandatory thing. That's not a suggestion. So that's one of those oops type things. Okay, now the second issue... Okay. Okay. That I had, now the second issue that I had was what 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 what's the other thing that I had? What 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 what's the other thing that I had? Okay. The primary mortgage insurance. Okay. The primary mortgage insurance. Yes. I heard the PMI. That, yes, I heard, I heard that, that. Yes, I heard that. Not through no evidence. Just not through me. No evidence. Just through me. Reading. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. You are breaking up. I'm catching every other word. So your signal is uh, probably having some issues. Come on, but let's check in the room. I, Come on, let's check in the room. You knew that you had signal problems and you put me through that? No, it, it was doing that in the liver, in the kitchen as well. No, it, it was I'm doing kidding, that in I'm the kitchen, in the kitchen, kitchen I'm as kidding, well. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. See, I don't know why you in a place where you ain't got no signal. See, it's, doing, it's back feeding. It's, it's feeding back. Back feeding. It's, it's feeding back. I got you. <laughs> we heard as soon as we came in the building. Yeah, but <laughs> as we came in the building. <laughs> but no, 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 no. See, as I told people, what your children, yeah. they come first. So if they need your attention, give that to them. I will hold. Okay. Because, you see, okay. as I tell people, you don't get this time back. Once this time is gone, once today is gone, you'll never get this back with your child. Today will be over, and all of those opportunities are lost. You can't make up for it. Sorry, with children, you can't make up for anything, and everybody thinks, well, I'll just make up for it later. Nope, sorry. It doesn't work that way in reality. Yeah. So that's why I say what I yeah. say. Okay, so go ahead and tell me what was the next issue you were trying to explain. Now, while you're doing that, I have to go over to my solar system, and I have to – Disconnect uh -huh. and reconnect. So go right ahead. I can hear you with not without a problem. You're gonna hear some beeping, uh -huh. and that's only because of what I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm I'm all ears. Yeah. Go ahead and tell me what's your next issue. Okay. The next issue was okay. the next issue was I was I was a little investigation on investigation on reading the rules reading the rules. And some kind of way, and some kind of way, one, one, which. No, see, you're breaking which, up again. See, I heard you say some kind of way, and I think you said one, and that was it. it let me pull the breaking up. So try let me pull the way. House. The house must be. Is your phone on Bluetooth or something? Is your phone on Bluetooth or something? Well, do me a favor. Put it. Or do you have me on speakerphone, or do you have me on Bluetooth? 
Hello? It's on speaker. It's on speaker Hello? now. It's on speaker. It's on speaker now. Okay, go ahead and do it like that right there. You should be okay because I think the connection sounds a lot better. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Now, you, you said you okay, were talking. The U, the UCC one, the UCC one, and the UCC and the UCC within three. three? Okay, UCC one, UCC three. Now I don't UCC hear you. Nope, cannot hear you. UCC one, UCC one. Okay. And the three would have to be, and the three. Yes. Would have to be, would have to be. Foul would have to be foul with this with with this. I want to make sure I'm saying it correct. I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly. I want to make sure that the form is being sure filed that the form with the state, state being filed with the state to give you to the give ability you to issue credit to issue credit. Why do you need? a UCC one or UCC three filed with the state to issue credit. Why would you need the state's permission? Why would you need tell to file a uniform uh, commercial code financing one statement to issue credit? No, 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 not a book. Where is the actual code that says that that's what needs to be done? See, the book suggests that that should be done, but where is the actual code that they're getting any information from that says such is necessary? Yeah. Now, let me tell you why I first raised objection, because I've not heard that before, although somebody probably mentioned it at least once or twice in the past. Let me explain. The full faith and credit of the United States comes from where? The, we the people. The, the people. We the people. Yeah, the people. So you already have credit. You're already a beneficiary of the trust. You don't need to file no special papers for your property. Everyone has the right to be secure, so you're already a secure party creditor. You have the right to be secure in your possessions and your properties and your effects and your things. That's the Fourth Amendment security. Now, hold on. The Fourth Amendment doesn't give you that right. The Fourth Amendment only secures the rights you already have. So why do you need to get their permission to issue your own credit? That's my question. And nobody's been able to ever answer that for me. Just like I, I tell people, why I got to register my property with the county? I purchased the property. I have proof I purchased the property from the previous owner. Why I got to register anything with the county? The county ain't got no authority over my property. This is private property. You follow? So will I lose, mind you, I my, so will I lose my... Go ahead. Will I lose my beneficiary? My beneficiary position, position by filing by filing the second lawsuit that I'm going to file with the federal government. Why would you government? lose a beneficiary position by filing a lawsuit? Because the why would you lose you anything? Me to exercising your right. Me to Christopher Hauser. I didn't send you to he Christopher Hauser. He kept saying. Wait, wait, no. hold on. When did I send you to Christopher <laughs> Hauser? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Christopher, Mr. Christopher Hauser has given me a shout out on his channel. He's actually told people that they have to do their own research and homework. And I give that young man all the credit in the world because he said that because at first he didn't say that to people. But after he looked at my video or was told of the fact that I mentioned him on my video, he went back and told everybody you do have to do your own research and homework. So I've been wanting to give a shout out to that young man saying that, yes, thank you, because that's what we should be telling everybody. Why? Because people hang on our every word, those of us who are doing videos. And so we have to make sure that they know that they have to go do their own research. So again, you don't have to become a secure party creditor. There is no rule. But if you want to operate in commerce like they're doing, then you're going to have to follow the rules of becoming a secure party creditor. But I'm not operating in commerce. I'm already a creditor. That's why I'm doing 1099 C's. Told you I'm going into the business of 1099 C's. 
I'm not doing lawsuits anymore. Everything is 1099C. I just did a video last night talking about it, and the day before I did a video talking about just 1099C and everybody. You got a problem with me and your corporation? Don't worry about it. I'm going to charge you for every day. I'm going to make sure that because you ain't paying that I'm going to keep charging you, and then I'm going to get to a point, and I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to send you a 1099C, and I'm going to tell you to have a coconut smile because you're forgiven. And then you're hey, responsible for the taxes. Hey, hey, John, listen. Yes, go ahead. You talk hey, kind of fast when you, you be saying it. Fast when you be saying it. You okay. better believe it. Because okay. it's <laughs> running the meal. It's it's not something that I'm making up. It's something that's already there. So okay, if I was talking slow, down, slow that I'd have okay, to think about slow it. Slow down, though. Listen. You get to go back I'm and listen. To calculate. You don't even get to slow down the audio. Yeah. Okay. You will not even get to slow down the audio. Okay. Look. So you. Okay. Look. Look, let so me explain it this way. No, 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 don't, don't do that. What okay. I'm saying, I'm going to say it again so that okay. it, there's no mistaking. Because, see, when people say, so what you're trying to say, no, no, not what I'm saying. This is what I said. I'm a creditor. Why? Because I don't cause harm to my neighbor. I did in the past harm my neighbor, but I don't harm my neighbor anymore. But my neighbor has been harming me. Corporations have been harming me. They kept me in jail for two years two months and then in puerto rico they kept me in jail for four years in two separate systems coming at me for something i've already paid the price for they're yeah. trying to say i'm still on probation yeah. well because i served jail time in lieu of probation and i completed that jail time there is no probation because i've already maxed out the probation by serving the jail time instead and the court recognized it when it sentenced me to jail and put it on the record so all of these times these idiots have been arresting me, they never had a right to arrest me. So now, hey, I bring this to their attention. What up, fools? I let you do that to me because, you know, I was punishing myself, but I'm not punishing myself anymore. I'm going to punish you. And I'm charging you for every day. I got these arbitration awards I got against you, and you know an arbitrator award is a uh -huh. judgment from a court. Uh -huh. I don't need to get it confirmed. The arbitrator has already issued it. You've gone past 90 days. I don't need to get confirmation from the court because you just solidified the award by waiting 90 days. Nobody can challenge the award after 90 days. That's the law. So since you owe me this money, here's your bill. I'm going to give you 30 days to pay. 30 days are up. Hey, you guys ain't paid. Well, don't worry nothing about it. Don't you dare fret. Mm -mm. I don't want you to be concerned about this debt anymore. I don't forgive you because the IRS says I need to forgive you if I want to receive credit. Because that's the only reason why you do debt forgiveness is because you're going to receive a benefit. You don't forgive nobody's debt if you ain't going to receive a benefit. So stop thank right you. Stop. 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 That's what I'm looking for. Stop. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. The, 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 the creditor. The, 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 the creditor receive receive a credit a credit off of debt that yeah, they have forgiven that they have forgiven they're forgiven it yes that's why they received the credits because they forgave their neighbor okay okay so okay. i need to add that okay. into this so i need to right add that into this right lawsuit now. right now that i'm finna file right now yeah that they received a credit from the government that they benefited and they were supposed to offset that benefit that they received with whatever debt they claimed you owed and they didn't do that which is fraud because that means that they reported an amount owing that wasn't accurate plus they traded it on the market they made a profit off of the interest they have not offset that profit with your portion that you were supposed to receive for them trading it on the market because you never agreed to pay them back and then to allow them to trade it on the market for free. There is no agreement that you said you get to do this for free. That is where you was requesting the T1 form. That is where form. you was requesting the T1 form. You not No, the T1 form is because the, the trustee... It's for the securitization. Trustee. Yes, he's sitting up there involved in foreclosures. He's not supposed to be involved in foreclosure. He can only be involved in securities. When he I'm gets involved in foreclosures, I'm I'm a the one form says you can't add that too. Then we can add at the bottom of your mortgage, many of you have that barcode. If you don't have that, that's because you don't have a recent copy. 
the bottom of your that's why i tell people you always ask for a copy of the mortgage as it stands today you a it. copy of the deed of trust a copy of the note it. as it stands today not an original copy but there's i want a, a copy it's of the not. current there's deed of trust there's a barcode at the bottom that barcode at the bottom signifies within that barcode reading with the sec the sec has a program that tells you exactly what each one of those numbers stand for one of them is proof that it was paid why because they sent it through a broker and the broker paid the bank for that process remember they have to convert it from a mortgage to a security that uh -huh. means there's a transference that uh -huh. means the mortgage is dead hey, you one cannot, a mortgage cannot be hey, a security second. okay go ahead since we're okay. speaking on the barcode since right now we're speaking on the barcode right now yeah inside of the barcode inside of the barcode that i found from navy federal that i found from navy that was federal. the numbers that was on the uh the bill that was sent to me that was the numbers that was on the uh the bill that was sent i to seen me. that the bottom had a detachable part that the bottom had a detachable part yes that's a coupon and and that yet I you know out that yet I you know out you pay to the order of that's how you do that it's a receipt it's a it's a coupon it's a check when you fill it out the correct way that's what I need I need assistance no, look, okay let me, let me explain this no let me explain this correct. no let me explain this so that you get it all you gotta do is watch any A for V video but let me explain this when you send them an A for V remember everything is credit there is no money the Treasury tells you you the legal tender in the form of Federal Reserve notes is not money. It has no value. It's not redeemable. That's been the case since 1933. So there is no money. There's only credit. So when you give them an A for B and you tell them how to get their credit by taking it to the Treasury and crediting your account or giving them permission to access your account and they don't do it, then you charge them for that. You write them up and saying you now owe me because I paid you and you didn't document it. And you're still trying to charge me. You 1099 see the idiot. Because guess what's going to happen? They're going to be responsible for the taxes. They're going to go to the IRS and say, this is not a valid charge. The IRS can't say, well, you know, we think it ain't a valid charge, so we're going to just go ahead and erase it. No, they can't do that. They can't take the credit away from you without there being a hearing. If there's a hearing, now they have to introduce all of this evidence that they can't introduce because it will show their fraud. And so that's how you take care of them. By and then, charging them for all of the A then, for V's that you have done that they have monetized. Why? Because they are greedy. We know they monetize everything. We monetize. know they monetize everything. Monetize. Let me say that again. We know they monetize everything. Yes. So we charge them yes. by sending them a bill for every 1099 that we've ever done. If you did an OID, charge them for it because we know they process the OID. The IRS saying you can't do an OID. Of course I can because I am the original issuer, but the bank issued one ahead of you. That was your problem. You didn't know that another 1099 OID was already on the record. So here you are putting a second 1099 OID on the record. That's fraud. Unless you can prove the first one was fraudulent, which right means there has right to be now. a voiding right out of the now. first one or right a correcting right of the first one. See, these are the things that people are missing when they're playing around with 1099 OIDs. But you can do a 1099A and not have to do a 1099 OID. 1099A saves you. Because it doesn't matter if somebody else did a 1099 Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. The, now, is, the okay. problem is everybody's looking at now. it as if they're a debtor because they've always been in the debtor's position. I'm not a debtor. I don't owe any debt to anyone. I don't owe any agency, any government agency, any bills. I don't have any bills. Please understand because I stopped thinking like a debtor. Now, I do pay for things. I do have credit cards, but I don't have any bills. Okay. Yeah. Talk to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm going to uh, add all this into the police I'm report. I'm going to add I, all I this did. into the police that, like report. Like I told you, the police I, I, report did, did not like allow me to give a statement. Did not allow me to give a statement. 
So, but no, 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 no. That's why I say you so file an affidavit with the police report. And if you bring the police report for fraud, I have a young lady. Uh, she lives in North Carolina. She went and used the hour style money order to buy a car. They recognized that it was a money order and that it was an hour style money order, and they accepted it and gave her the car. And then they tried to they talked to an attorney and tried to take the car back. Sent the police to her house. She tried to file a police report and they wouldn't file it because she was filing under the wrong thing. She needed to file a identity theft report and associate the car. Okay, I would have gone after the police department for operating as a repo agent because they unlawfully took her car. They had no authority to take that car back from her. That was a civil matter. It had to go through the court because she had proof that everything was on that money order when they took the vehicle back. The money order had all the language it needed, showing that they were fully aware of what they were receiving. It operates as a letter of credit. All right, talk to me. Okay. Uh, you okay. already uh, answered one question, but I won't lose my beneficial. But I won't right lose by my beneficial. Be right e by nine e period. E once e I file e this lawsuit. E period. Once I file this lawsuit. Here's the problem. Why would you lose your beneficiary standing anyway? It's a trust agreement. You can't lose your beneficiary standing. You can't breach the trust. You okay. don't have the authority to breach the trust. Even okay. if you wanted to breach the trust, you couldn't breach the trust. Okay. Now the second. Because you don't even know what the trust now, says. The you don't even thing. know what the language of the trust is. So how can you breach something? You have to have knowledge of something before you can violate something. Go okay, ahead. Talk so to me. Got, What's the next question? Okay. So got, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, according to the securitization according audit. According to the securitization audit that my attorney told me about. That my attorney told me about. He told me that it is he twenty five it is twenty five things that I can request that I can request in a securitization audit in a securitization audit. I don't have nothing but what I just told I don't you. have <laughs> nothing but what I just told you. Okay. And I okay, need hold some on more. Now. So I can and I need the, some more. He, but so no, 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 no. You good. don't understand. The securitization audit is done by uh, an auditor. So you just ask them to do the securitization audit. They will point out the things that they're looking for in the securitization audit. They know what things stand out. Securitization audit will give you all of the QCIT numbers and all of the so-called investor information, and it will show you everything that's been done. The only thing about it, it won't show you all of the payments. So what you need to be asking them for is a comprehensive accounting. Say, I don't want a statement. I want an audit of the account. account. I do not believe, yes, I don't believe that you've been applying all of my payments as agreed. By the way, we need to talk about the fact that while there was a moratorium, the bank was charging you interest, that they were still charging you interest. Okay, what you need to do is you need to tell the bank you cannot assess interest because you've been accepting the interest and not the principal all of this time. And because there was a moratorium on the principal, you could not collect interest on the principal during this time since you've been taking the interest that's supposed to be on the tail end and you've been applying it and taking it first when you're supposed to be taking the interest from each payment since we have payment arrangements. See, here's the problem. Everybody's been allowing the bank to take interest first from the payment they received on the loan as opposed to taking the interest from each payment. You see, the problem is the banks have been doing this without there being a valid agreement for them to do this. And that's how you have to hit them in the head and say, stop it. I ain't gave you permission to do that. Like you do a little child. What What you doing? I ain't tell you to do that. No, get back, uh, get in your room. See, that's what you have to do to the bank. Okay. 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 Because they've been taking okay. the interest okay. first. Most people don't know that every mortgage payment they have made has not been on the principal. It's been on the interest. Well, there is no agreement for the bank to take the interest first. They don't have that right. You're paying on the loan. The interest is supposed to be monthly, not annually. And because the interest is monthly on the payments, then they're supposed to be taking the interest for that month and the payment for that month and nobody's been hitting them in the head, making sure this 
is what you will do from now on. No, I do not agree to you taking the interest first and ignoring the premium, ignoring the principle. Okay. Okay. And it okay. will take some fighting because okay. they, this has been going okay. on for decades that the bank has been taking interest first. And then you're paying for the principal or the actual mortgage, you're paying for that on the tail end. Why? Because it's all profit for the bank. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the banks are not paying any taxes on that interest. I'm sorry, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, uh, the, the what else do other things? Oh, uh, the, the what else do other things? The quick claim deed that you refer to. The quick to. claim deed that you refer to. The quick claim deed. If, I'm going to do this I very found, simply and very if, quickly. If I found, if I found if, the federal if I lawsuit, found, the federal lawsuit, I filed a lawsuit with the marshals to serve the marshals to serve them. I'm gonna use the sheriff yeah, you, department. I'm gonna use the sheriff department. I want to have them to serve. I want to have them to serve them. So I want to go in line. I want to go. So I want to go in line. Department. I want to go from the Atlanta Police Department. No, I want to go. You can't do that. I if you file a lawsuit. Okay. And you do it in the federal court. It's the U.S. Marshals who have jurisdiction. The sheriff doesn't have any jurisdiction on a federal level. Okay, no. You more. can only do the sheriff on the state okay, level. Okay, no more. Okay. No, 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 no. I didn't tell you not to do anything. I just said okay. you have to do it the procedural way. So the marshals are federal. And if you're going to file a lawsuit on the federal level, remember you cannot make any statements. You have to do. It is believed. It is presumed. It is assumed. That's the language of your suit. You have to definitely title your suit after you give it its name, statement of claims before you start stating anything. You make it an affidavit, you get it notarized. You place that on the record because it's a notarized affidavit, it has to be rebutted. Uh -huh. Okay, keep it succinct, uh -huh. keep it simple. The who, what, when, why, how, and where, only a couple of paragraphs explaining what happened. And are you familiar okay, with the you fact know act? The state of are you familiar with the fact act? The fact act? Yes. Yes. I'm familiar with that junk they're trying to pass. They haven't passed it yet. Okay. Well, the lawsuit that I filed okay. last well, time. Lawsuit, that's oh no, no, I'm sorry. Not the fact time. act. I'm thinking that's about the I fair did. act. I'm sorry. No, I, I don't know about the fact act. What's the fact act? What's the title? It's, I'm thinking it's, about the fair act. I apologize. It's, it's, what, what is the fact act? What, what is my wife finna pull it up right now? It's it's called my the wife fact act. Uh -uh, right she now. can't pull it up. I already beat her to it. I already it's googled called it. The, it's <laughs> called the Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Act. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I know yes. about Barbara. Yes. Barbara. Now, Barbara. Yeah. Barbara. I know about Barbara. Now, now, this is the Credit Reporting Act. This is the the very same thing you've been doing. Uh huh. This is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh huh. Okay. So what oh, do yeah, I do? It's the very is, same okay. thing. It's the, it's so the, what do I do? See, is, because I said Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Act, please, it's the Fair Credit Reporting Act. It's the 206, 204, 205, 209 things that you've already been doing. Yes, I know uh, what the Fair Credit Reporting Act is. Uh huh. Uh huh. See, so you said the Fact Act. Yeah. And see, it, it is called the Fact Act, yeah. but nobody calls it that. They call it the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Yeah, but see so, when uh, I filed I my you. lawsuit, yeah, I put my see, lawsuit when I filed in, my lawsuit, I put my lawsuit, my lawsuit in speaking in, in general, like I put you my saying, lawsuit but I want to make general sure speaking like saying, in general, sure like it is general, a suspected like, fraud. It is a here. suspected fraud. I have here. not well, received is a the deed fraud. to my house. Received the deed to my house. It is a lender that okay. I have never it is seen a lender or signed or I have contract never seen or signed for contract with a, his name if on a contract that was 